Brenda and Craig here from Roaming and Recording. <laughs> <laughs> Back in August, we took a trip to Athens and we left out of JFK and we took Air France business class, our yes. first business class, the lay flat seats. And we learned a lot, as we always do, and um, many things went right and some things went wrong. And we're here to give you our experience so that maybe you can learn a few things because we certainly did, didn't we? Yeah, it was, uh, we were real excited about it. So, uh, yeah, we'll tell you what happened and we'll tell you what our experience was. Yeah. So if you remember or if you saw a previous video, we had had a flight just willy nilly canceled um, completely and nobody told us. So we were checking every day, every week. Mm -hmm. Is the flight still there? Is the flight still there? And it was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, so we were very excited about it. And, um, and about two days before we were ready to leave, we got an email alert from Air France saying, oh, sorry, uh, your business class flights are now going to be premium economy. Mm. Now, I should note that there's a couple of things that you, you need to know. One, I booked three business class tickets 11 months in advance, 11 months in advance, and we did use points for this. If we had not used points for three people, this, this flight would have cost $21,000, so $7,000 a piece. So our expectations are high. Right. Right. Yeah, so like uh, like she says, a couple days before we were going to fly, I came in and told her, well, I got an email that says we got downgraded. And she said, I thought I was kidding her because uh, we were looking every single day. And uh, sure enough, it came in. So Craig said, just grab the seats. And I'm yeah. thinking, no, I've had these for 11 months. So what I did is I called Flying Blue because when you book a business class or any kind of a point redemption for uh, Air France or KLM Airlines, you have to do it through the Flying Blue program. And so I called up Flying Blue and they were fabulous. But before I did that, I went online and I looked and thankfully we were going out of uh, New York because I think that was one thing that we really learned is you want to be in a big hub of an airport that has multiple flights going because we just looked and saw what other flights were going to Paris that day and we found one that was an hour earlier. And so I called Flying Blue up with that flight in mind and I said, hey, you know, this happened. This is for my son's birthday uh, trip and, you know, would really love it if you could get us on that flight. She said, no problem. Mm -hmm. She booked us on business class. However, there was a change in aircraft. So originally we were supposed to be doing an Airbus A350-900 and this flight was on a Boeing 777-300. Right, so that, yeah, so it's a total configuration difference. I'm not sure what the A350 has as far as total number of business class, but on the 777, it had 20 rows of business class seats at four, four each, right? One, two, one. Right. So that's 80 seats in business class. So when we were on the original flight, we had all gotten uh, window seats, which we were really excited about. Since this was at a last minute change on a different airline, we didn't have uh, much of a choice. We could have gotten two up front and our son could get a window, which he really wanted the window. So um, he, he kept a window seat, but there were no other window seats for Craig and I. So we thought, you know, hey, we like each other. We'll, we'll sit next to each other. <coughs> And so we decided to sit next to each other in the same row that my son could get the only window seat, which happened to be the very last row of business class. So what did we learn about that, Craig? Uh, probably don't pick the very last row of business class. No. <laughs> now, remember, you know, you're excited about it. You expect great food, great service. And um, we had some real hiccups. We had picked out our meals, you know, I think two weeks in advance. We had to repick them, you know, which was not a problem. They even came back and said, hey, you've got the fish, you've got the chicken, and you've got the beef. And we're all like, yes. Mm. So they came back. The first thing that happened uh, with the seating arrangement that way was they forgot, I think, to bring my sons. And they came back, oh, about a half hour after everybody else uh, had theirs and said, oh, well, we're getting yours 
and um, he's not a big drinker. They tried to give him a lot of alcohol, but he's not a big drinker. So, um, but I think he had to wait a full hour, a full yeah. hour to get his, his meal after everybody else had eaten. Right. So that was really disappointing. The food, however, was, was pretty good. And um, at least mine was. Craig wasn't real thrilled about his steak, but I had the chicken with the Chablis sauce and it was fabulous. Yeah, I, mine wasn't that great. It wasn't as I was hoping it would be, but you know, I'm picky at eating and stuff like that. And it was good, but it just wasn't great. Yeah, I think that we all agreed that the uh, starter course was pretty impressive. It had, mm -hmm. um, you know, a cheese plate and then it had a, a lobster with a really nice sauce on it. And that was pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. And the dessert was, was good. It was like a little cheesecake. So I thought the food overall was very good. I know my son uh, liked his. Craig again, you know, a little picky. And um, he's not big on sauces, so it came with like, like a little bit of a sauce too. So then the next thing that happened was, um, you know, we had had the seats lay flat. And, you know, there are some things that were out of our control and some things that were in our control. And this was unfortunate. So my husband got up and he went to the restroom and I was laying flat and I saw someone go into his area and I had my glasses off. So I put my glasses on. I'm like, hey, can I, can I help you? And it's this little 12 year old, 13 year old girl. And she was wandering around during the night going into everybody's area. And I'm telling you, she she picked up his wine and drank it. <laughs> he came back and his, there, his wine wasn't there. Um, and I tell you this because I don't know where the flight attendants were. Um, yeah, and she um, kept looking over her seat, you know, at you know, looking over, looking to see what I was doing and stuff like that. And then, like Brenda said, as soon as I went to go to the bathroom, I had a half a glass of wine and I come back and it's gone. I go, well, I guess the flight attendant must have taken it or something like that. But then Brenda said she saw her. Yeah, she, she and, was. And I saw her roaming around the whole area, just looking in there, see what people were doing, see if there's anything to take, in my opinion. Yeah. So that was kind of strange. Yeah. And again, the flight attendants weren't attentive at that. Um, after our meal, they didn't come back and ask if we wanted like a after dinner drink or a, t a tea or a coffee or anything. So I thought that the service was lacking. And I do think it was lacking because of the row we were in. Yeah. Yeah. We were way back at the end. And uh, I think we were the last ones being served on everything. And they really didn't have enough crew, in my opinion. Yeah. And so breakfast came the next day and um you know they asked what you wanted for breakfast and i wanted the omelet and you know whatever else they brought and it was it was good um but what happened to you you craig well so they ask you if you want to be woken up um, for breakfast and because it's about an hour or so before you land and i said yeah because i like breakfast and so i'm sitting there in the 20th row of course and i've seen all these breakfasts being served and they get back to me and they go, oh, we, we, no, they said the oven, the oven was was broken, so we can't get you one. You yeah, know? so he couldn't get his omelet, so he didn't get his breakfast. Yeah. And um, I think that's wrong. However, what I think truly happened was, is I again, because we were in the last row, I think that they just didn't come back or, or didn't plan correctly because right after that, they came out with some nice little heated towels for everybody, which right. I'm sure that they probably put in maybe the same area. I don't know. I don't, never worked on an air, airplane. I don't know if they use the same heating play, mm -hmm. things up or, or what, but um, you know, miraculously we got something that was heated. So I, I just think if you were going to pay, think about it, $7,000 for a seat on an air, airplane, you would expect great service. Mm -hmm. And that's what we were going to say is it really should have been better. I think it would have been tremendous if um, those things hadn't happened because we were so excited. It was a trip for my son's 40th birthday and we wanted to do it up in style. Yeah, so it was, I, if I paid 7,000, I'd, I'd really be upset about it. And I, I guess, you know, we paid a lot of points. We, yeah, you know, we paid uh, 165,000 points for three people. Uh, that did go with, um, it was, I think it broke down to 55,000 points per person. And then w when we transferred it, we did get a 25% transfer bonus. So it cost us a little bit less than that. And then we, it was an outlay of $620 for all three of us. You can't go wrong for $620 yeah, I mean, for that. But again, you know, when you are doing a business uh, 
class flight, you expect certain certain standards. Mm -hmm. And I think they fell short. I don't know if it was this particular crew. Um, I would definitely do it again, but um, I definitely would never be in the last seat, in the last row. No, uh, I don't think so either, because it does seem like they start at the front and they go to the back. And yeah. if they run out of anything or, I don't know, they get tired, they yeah. don't want to wait on anybody. But... Well, and the other <laughs> thing too, that now that I remember it, is I had to go to the restroom. So I went up front, which is, you know, where he went and up to the, the business class restroom, which is nicer, nicer amenities and things. And I tried to go three times and every time they said, get back, there's turbulence. <laughs> So I never did make it up to, to the nice restrooms, but since I was in the last row, I just snuck behind and went in, in you know, the, the premium economy, which was just fine. Yeah, you know, but again, um, it's part of the experience to have those things. I will tell you though, one thing that was really exciting about, I thought, uh, being on Air France was having access to their business lounge. Now, I was really lucky and very excited. I think I may have mentioned uh, in a past video that I uh, am a massage therapist. So anytime I can get something done, it's it's super exciting. And if you're flying at um, out of JFK or I believe um, out of Paris, they have a Clarence Spa area. And you can sign up for either a free 20 minute massage or a free facial. So I went up and I asked, how do I do that? And they said, oh, she'll bring out a, a form and you can just sign up then. So I was very lucky. I was the first person in line to sign up. And then uh, there was another gentleman. There was a gentleman behind me and my son was behind him and a couple other people. So I signed up, I got a facial, which was really fabulous. It's really excited, very relaxing. Uh, I can't recommend it enough, but uh, make sure you know when that, that sign up uh, starts. And uh, then the gentleman behind me, I don't know what he booked, but he got booked. Then my son got there and he was going to sign up and they said, oh, it's closed now. So they only take two, two appointments. And then I think the, the next ones would have started like three hours later. So, you know, they're super limited, but really nice if you can get them. Yeah. So I guess that's the, um, that's the thought here is that you have to do it right away. Once you get there, sign up for it. Don't wait around because it's very limited, like Brenda says. Yeah. And I thought the food in the lounge was really good. The service in the lounge was excellent. They, of course, you know, it's Air France, so you had access to champagne right away. Yeah, and they had a breakfast, which was good. Yeah. So yeah. I got my breakfast. And then, of course, you know, we flew with the lay flat seats from JFK over to Paris. But when you fly Paris to Athens, you don't get lay flat seats, nor do you need them. Yeah, it's only a, a couple hours flight, and so uh, I'm not sure what plane we were on. But the nice thing is that since we we're business class, we got in a row where there was no nobody in the middle seat. So that's that's really nice. Yeah, we enjoyed that. And and we got more champagne. Yeah. <laughs> so that's always good. So would we ever fly this paying cash? Do you think? Uh, no, I don't think so. Twenty-one thousand. No. I can take a quite a few well, trips. Even if, even if you got it cheaper than that, I'm, I'm not sure I'd do that. Yeah, oh, but I would definitely do it with points again. Yeah, if it, had, if it was points, that yeah. would be good. And I think what we've really learned is that you want to book your flights early, as early as you can, especially if you're using points. Mm -hmm. And then you want to keep on top of it. One, to make sure that it's not canceled. Yep. Two, to make sure that you're not downgraded. And if you do get that downgrade, you call either the airline if you've paid cash or you call Flying Blue if you've booked with points and make sure that you have a list of flights that you are ready to do. Matter of fact, it might be a, a, a good idea maybe to take the first flight of the day so that you have more options in the afternoon. Right. That's That I think was a great idea is that, first of all, JFK had several flights going to Paris. I mean, they probably had a half a dozen flights. So if we took the first flight or near the first flight, you got choices then of going a little bit later. So I, I think that was a real good idea. So all in all, um, I really did enjoy it. I think that there were some things out of our control. If there was the air uh, craft change, there's nothing we can do about that. I was happy that we got on there because I don't think we would have, we might've gotten points back, but you know, we, we would have had a, lesser experience 
and I wasn't willing to accept a downgrade without, you know, a lot of compensation, but I wasn't really willing to accept it with compensation. This was a, a big trip for our family, mm -hmm. and it meant a lot for us to all experience that business class, you know, together for the first time. Mm -hmm. So that was our first experience with business class flight across the pond. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let us know if you've had a similar experience or which uh, business class flight you really enjoyed. We want to hear the good, the bad, how you got it fixed, uh, what you enjoyed, everything about it, because we would like to do it again, I, th I think. Yeah, yeah, and, and it was an experience. It was a good experience. Uh, we're looking forward to the next time. I think it will get only better from here. Please do like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time on Roaming and Recording. Okay, bye now.